morning mending rodas in this beautiful sunday uh this is the first sunday after the epiphany and the last sunday of january already and so welcome to our service and all our friends joining us i hope that you are going to um enjoy and participate in the in the worship and also be challenged uh, in one way or the other and so i hope that we we will journey together and will continue to shine God's light throughout. And so we'll begin with worship now, with notices. And so, yeah, thank you, friends, for joining us. Our notices for this week are as follows. Friends, a reminder of our food bank. Um, asking all our friends to bring tins as we continue to be mindful of those who are in need. Our glass and paper recycling bin are still in use, so please bring plastic and, and glasses. And on the 7th of February, we'll have our covenant service, which will be streamed on Facebook and YouTube at 9 a.m. And then at 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., we are going to have the drive-by communion in the car park and so we we urge each and everyone we are going to keep all the covid regulation we just feel maybe with this time of covid maybe we do something differently because there are a lot of us who are in need who are lonely at this time and maybe let us have communion in this way there will be people be guiding the cars uh, inside the park the car park so that the movement uh, is, 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 is careful and social distancing is kept and, and, and all regulation kept. And we continue to urge those who are not well to stay at home. If you feel that maybe you, you pass this one, it's fine, but we will have this communion together. Uh, and, and we hope that uh, we are going to be refreshed we are also going to have communion on our Facebook and YouTube. And so if you are not coming, you can prepare it at home so that you, you have it when during the service online. Parents and teachers, um, our children church is beginning today at 10.15 to 11.15. Uh, and so please note the link which is attached on the slide and the links were sent via whatsapp as well and so we hope that everyone got them and they will be able to join us friends please note the birthdays below and we just put everyone for january together since we didn't do them weekly We wish all our friends listed here wonderful birthdays. Some have celebrated them from the beginning of the month. Some are still to celebrate them for this month, but we thank the Lord for the gift of life. And we hope everyone uh, will enjoy or has enjoyed their day. And hopefully they are eager for what the Lord has installed for them. So be blessed friends and happy birthday to you all. Let us join together friends in our call to worship. It is responsive and we hope that wherever we are, we can be able to respond and participate. Creation groans, the earth shakes, the mountains quake, tempting our hearts to fear. We have cried out from the depth of our spirits. We have said beautiful words, we have said simple words, and we have said meaningless words. Whether we are at our lowest, seeing no way out of our troubles, feeling lonely and crushed,
And so let us join our voices as we sing together, bless the Lord, O my soul, as we are led by the Manning Road Choir and Worship Team. As we come together and think of our friends and families who need prayer right now, let us join together as we think of them. Some might not be listed here, but let us remember them as we do the act of connection. We are hard pressed on every side, perplexed persecuted, struck down, and so we stand together in faith, in hope, and in love today as we remember the Freeman family, the Gebuza family, 
Nolinde Khrut, Rudy Naidu, Shelley Smith, Wally Randall, and all our friends who are in difficulties at the moment and need all our thoughts and prayers. Let us join our voices together again as we sing a song called Ugutula, as also we are led by the Mending Road Choir and the worship team. Let us humble ourselves as we come to a time of confession, and so we pray together. Lord, we come before you knowing that you constantly demonstrate your love to us, even though we constantly ignore it. We acknowledge that sometimes we are complacent to love, to care, or even to see the other. Lord, in a time of a pandemic, many are losing their lives, many are in isolation, and many have lost hope for a fruitful 2021. Lord, we acknowledge that this pandemic has caused us to be wary 
and to live in constant fear, forgetting about your light, which shine to a troubled world. Lord, help us to be your church. We seek to experience you in lowly places. Help us to be your church to the helpless and hopeless. Help us to be your church to the mourning and sick. Help us to be your church to your creation because as much as we are in lockdown but your love streams from every airwave, every song, in every heart. Amen. Today we are not going to sing the Lost Prayer, but we are going to say a Lost Prayer with a challenge, which is written by an unknown person which I find it very helpful for us as we continue to reflect on who God is in our lives. I cannot say our Father if I keep my faith only to myself and never share it with others. I cannot say Father if I do not trust in God's loving and complete concern for me, forgetting that God always answers prayers. I cannot say who art in heaven if I am so attached to the ways of this world that I neglect to seek God first in everything. I cannot say hallowed be thy name if I am unwilling to let God's holiness penetrate my life and help me grow in my own holiness. I cannot say thy kingdom come if I am not using my love to bring God's love into the world. I cannot say thy will be done if I choose to follow the world standards. I cannot say on earth as it is in heaven if I am not devoting my life to serving God here on earth. I cannot say give us this day our daily bread if I'm not willing to be generous with whatever God gives me, I cannot say forgive us our trespasses if I don't want to put forth enough effort to change. I cannot say as we forgive those who trespass against us if I still hold a grudge if I'm still angry or if I still insist that other people change but me. I cannot say lead us not into temptation if I deliberately or knowingly place myself in a position to be tempted. I cannot say deliver us from evil if I'm not actively fighting against evil through deeds of love and service for everyone and all creation. Amen. And so friends, now let us share the peace of the Lord and think of those who need it most at this time. The deep peace of God that infuses the universe from generation to generation flood our lives and the world. And so the scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark chapter 1 from verse 21 to verse 28 and we'll read it in the new revised standard version they went to Capernaum, and when the sabbath came he entered the synagogue and taught they were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority not as the scribes just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, 
the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed and they kept on asking one another, What is this? And your teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirit, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. And so friends, this is the word of the Lord, and we give thanks for God's word this morning. Let us join our voices once again as we sing together when we work with the Lord, as we are led by the Manning Road Methodist Choir and Worship Team. As we read today from the Gospel of Mark, which is a focused gospel for, for the year B in this current year. And so it's a very interesting, dramatic gospel, which is, which is short, which is, captures one's imaginations and thoughts. And so Mark does not mention himself in this, in this gospel, because we understand that he's trying to take the focus away from himself 
and, and take the focus to Jesus. He speaks about a Jesus who is doing, not just a Jesus who is, who is there, whom we see, who is born, but a Jesus who is doing. So from the beginning, he takes us from Jesus immediately this happened. A theme which we see throughout uh, this text, a word which we see throughout this gospel, a Jesus who is doing, a Jesus who is doing, a Jesus who is taking people from places of being forgotten, places of being marginalized, places of being excluded, and restoring their humanity so that they can be. And so that's why, friends, our focus this morning is on the theme of restoring humanity, of, of, of restoring, of being restored into the full humanity so that we can live, we can live out our lives and so that our light can, can matter, not just for some, but for all people. And so that's why, friends, it is important for us to reflect this morning. And friends, dehumanization is all around us. Um, we have actually legalized dehumanization um, throughout ages. Dehumanizations have been legalized through laws, through constitutions, uh, through health systems, through economy, through church laws. Um, we have uh, legalized dehumanization. We have told people in this space that they are not welcome, whether it be their sexuality, whether it be their, be their, their status, uh, economic status, which did not fit with our economic status. And so we have, um, we have, we have told people, we have, we have legalized it, we have put it in our constitution that there are those who matter and those who do not matter. And that's why, friends, this, this, this story is, is very uh, important in our understanding of, of who Jesus is. Because if we cannot restore humanity even to the least of these, then we have missed the point of the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the issue of authority, the issue of power, and when we speak about restoring humanity, power comes into place. How do we use our power? Do we use our power to control or to deny life? Or do we use our power to serve? And that's why in this Gospel of Mark, Mark or John Mark, as we later learn in other sources that his other name was John, and many people might call him John Mark, still the same author. And in this Gospel, we learn a Jesus who uses his power to serve, who uses his power to restore rather than to deny life. And so how we use our power is very important. How we use our power as a church, how we use our power personally. And someone may say, but towards that I don't have power because I'm not in any position. I'm not in government. Well, we will learn that as children of God, we have power. And it matters how we use that power. And so Mark's gospel captures these images of a gospel which is alive, not just to some, but to all. John Mark, however, was not an eyewitness. 
In fact, out of the four gospel, Mark's gospel is believed to have been written first, which is interesting because it was not an eyewitness. It was not part of the, of the apostles which were chosen by Jesus. But we believe, or we have come to understand, that John Mark assisted Barnabas and Paul in their first missionary journey. There were conflicts after that, and after that he journeyed with Peter, whom we believe inspired him in terms of being his source for this gospel. And Peter was always the one doing and rushing things. And so that's why we believe even the pace of this uh, gospel come from, because it's fast moving. And that's Peter, that's the life of Peter. That's how Peter moved. And Jesus will rebuke him at times. But it was a person who, who thought with his actions. And so this, this gospel takes that pace. And we see this constant comparison of, of fear and faith in this gospel. And, and that Peter... There are about uh, two or three instances where Peter had to uh, apply faith, but only to find that fear consumed him and even all disciples. And yet there is this constant struggle between fear and faith. And we see this parallel in this gospel. Do we walk on fear or do we walk on faith? And then whichever we walk by will determine how we use our power, our authority. If we walk in fear, we will contribute or we will continue to contribute in the dehumanization of people. But if we walk by faith, we will contribute in restoring humanity in people's lives. Restoring humanity in people that are broken, in people that have lost hope. And so immediately in this gospel, we see Jesus entering a synagogue. A synagogue where there are people who came to listen to the word of God. Even though synagogue were used as civil gatherings as well, but we know they came to listen to, to the word of God in this particular day because it was the Sabbath. And Jesus comes in this space of people whom most likely have been worshipping in this synagogue for a while. But when Jesus came, They say these words. They were astonished at his teaching. They were astonished at his teaching. And his teaching was not like that of a scribe. And then my thinking goes, can it be that the teaching of Jesus was not the same as that of a scribe because of how they demonstrated their power, their authority? Others demonstrated their power in fear. 
Jesus demonstrate his power in faith. Faith that makes him believe when there is a voice in the synagogue, Jesus is able to quieten that voice. And friends, I don't want to, to come to, to, to Jesus taking out that demon and, 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 and all of that. I believe Jesus spoke as a, as, as a person who used his power in faith. He recognized that there's someone who's being tormented, who's being denied love among us. And the authority and the power which I have is for me to serve so that this person can be restored to life. He has been with people who believed amongst him in the, in, in the synagogue, but no one saw a problem in him. No one saw that we can actually, there is someone among us who is being denied life because of a certain spirit. And unless we see him where he is, he will continue to live life of torment, a life of being less than a human because of the spirit that he has. And I'm sure that people around him had gotten comfortable, complacent with him. And I'm sure they've even benefited from his dehumanization. And maybe that's why they didn't act. Because they were afraid. They were afraid. And so this community had normalized having people among them who were deemed unclean. It was normal. And this is a faith community. Normalizing having unclean people amongst them. Because as long as this unclean person is in their midst, it gives them power over them. We will make them believe that it's their fault that they are unclean and therefore they deserve to be where they are. It is their fault that they are poor. So we can't do anything about that. We don't have money for it. It's their fault that they are abused. Because if they were not loose, they would not have been abused. It's their fault that they are not going anywhere in life because they are lazy. It is their fault. And so we make them believe that there is nothing we can do about their situation. Jesus walks in a, a synagogue where people in the synagogue believe that there is nothing they can do to the man who was unclean because it was his fault. Well, Jesus uses authority to serve. And unfortunately, friends, as a community of faith, we have normalized poverty. We have normalized abuse. We have normalized discrimination. We have normalized inequality. To the point where we even become opponents of the reality 
of their situation being changed. The same people who were hostile to Jesus, the same people who became uncomfortable with Jesus, are the same people who walked in the synagogue and said, Lord, you are great. Why have we become complacent about the good news of Jesus Christ? That we normalize people being dehumanized in the name of faith. Something has to give. And I want to say, friends, some of us in this community have experienced that they were not enough. That they felt that something was wrong with them. And they felt that they couldn't be part of this community. Not because they don't love the Lord, because they don't fit in. This passage challenged us to respond in faith, not in fear. Faith without works is dead. And friends, I dare say to you, even in this time of a pandemic, still faith without works is dead. There's always a way to restore people to humanity. We cannot always give people excuses of why we are complacent with injustice. Because God has given us all power to love. You don't need a position. You don't need to be in government to love because God has given you that experience of love so that you can love. So use that love to serve, not to tell people how unworthy they are. We all have the power of peace. Let us use that power of peace to serve one another not to show how perfect we are to each other. We have the power of mercy. In that way, we will not be a church that are full of excuses when it comes to injustices, but we will be a church that says, even this little that we have, we are going to use it to restore humanity and dignity because that's what Jesus stood for. Friends, we don't have any excuse. And this week, friends, I'm saying to each and every one of us, be that person that is able to pull up someone else. Even when we don't do that physically, in the midst of this pandemic, when our friends are broken, let's be the people who pull each other up. Let's be the people who brings dignity to the stranger. Because of the one we follow. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Let us pray. Lord, help us to be an instrument of hope. Help us to see those who are down and lonely. Help us to be a church that brings healing and care to your children. Help us to restore those that have been forgotten 
and those who no longer find space among your people. Help us be the light, even in the most difficult circumstances. Amen. Once again, let us join our voices as we sing our closing hymn, who will save our land and people, as we are led by the Manning Road Choir and Worship Team. Let us now join and say grace together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us sing together for the last time as we join our voices and sing Shalom as we continue to be led by the Manning Road Choir and Worship Team. Thank you.